So, um, Eleni, first of all, welcome. And thank you so much for accepting my invitation. It's such a pleasure to have you here. And for those of you who uh, will watch this podcast on a later um, a stage, I just want to say that this specific podcast is part of the series, a well-being booster series we organized by Oxygen, and it is also powered by Urban Yoga Lab. Uh, today, it's a very, very special day, and it's a pleasure to have an amazing thought leader in the industry, an amazing um, HR thought leader, um, and I'm really excited to engage in a conversation with her regarding our three-month partnership between Leroy Merlin and Oxygen. Um, it's incredible that three months passed by already, Eleni. So, Eleni, welcome. Oh, Alex, uh, really, I'm feel blessed that I have met you and your team. Oxygen team. I'm very honored to be here with you. And I'm so happy that I will share all this experience up to now with you. Um, I'm so happy. I'm glad. I'm so glad to hear that. And uh, to be honest with you, Eleni, speaking of partnerships and collaborations, I have learned so much working with you on our Oxygen uh, well-being program. And for those of you who don't know Eleni, let me just give an introduction. Eleni is an empowerment and leadership coach um, and people team um, HO for Leroy Merlin, Greece and Cyprus. But before I get started with any questions, I would love to hear a little bit about you, Eleni, uh, anything that you would really like to share with our network. Uh, so let's let's start with that and then we can take it forward. Okay, great. So yes, um, Eleni, my name is Eleni Kostanku and I have been working in uh, Leroy Merlin for Greece and Cyprus. Uh, for eight years now as a, a coach and um, well-being coach and environment and leadership. And um, my passion is to take care of people um, who want to thrive and live their best life um, working and personal and working life. Amazing. I'm a working mom. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I live in Greece and um, I'm very happy that uh, we met. We are both Greek women and I'm very glad that we both meet each other um, through this uh, uh, project. But I think it will be a lifetime project. I'm so glad that I meet people uh, that have passion for well-being through true passion for well-being and uh, I have a great experience with you up to now. I'm so glad and uh, what I love about you Eleni first of all is that you are one of the most passionate uh, people um, in HR I know when it comes to well-being yoga mindfulness and coaching um, and it's, it, it is really inspiring every single time we, um, we get together to just discuss about our strategy and our next kind of uh, uh, our upcoming initiatives. You are always uh, coming up with so many amazing ideas, so many forward thinking kind of ideas. So can you tell us how you got interested in well-being? and employee will be in the first place. Yes. First of all, thank you for all these comments. And um, I'm very uh, happy that I have this opportunity to share my view um, here. So uh, it all started uh, uh, while I was conducting an experiential learning workshop in authenticity that I designed uh, a workshop in authenticity three years ago. And I did the exercise for the personal value system 
Uh, so while I was explaining um, to the team the instructions of this exercise, and I reflect the question of uh, what is the most important to you uh, so that you can feel complete in your daily life, uh, I noticed to my surprise that the first value that emerged was well-being. And that is because I thought that I was taking care of myself, but really without having heard myself genuinely. Uh, so I remember all of those times while I was working as a coach and I enjoyed doing and other creative things. Uh, but uh, I would come home feeling energetic, energetically uh, drained and with no appetite for uh, special interaction and communication. And then I realized that um, I had failed to recognize and communicate my own needs personally and professionally, such as rest, spiritual and physical, uh, a lot of joy. And uh, when I tried to recover, I did it profoundly in the wrong way uh, because I was lost, uh, I was uh, in pain. And in my way to lose my own self, I among other things that my professional ego wanted. Uh, this means that to catch up everything because doing for me uh, in this period meant being important. Uh, so the most challenging part was that all my shadows as a working mom and generally as a human came to meet me again. So I struggled with my fatigue uh, that I now call it burnout for a long time. And uh, what has helped me was the fact that as a coach and facilitator, I became more and more aware and conscious of what I was saying during this authenticity workshop and I was constantly um, reflect on what areas of my life am I thriving, what are my basic uh, wellness needs uh, uh, overall and which areas of my life do I want to improve. So I realized that when I was conducting the sessions, coaching and uh, workshops, I was in fact speaking to myself more rather than to people and although that uh, although what i was talking about and knowing uh cognitively on my personal purpose and values um i started to translate it timidly into small daily practices uh which brought me here today wanting to communicate it to more people to be more conscious to live better, to don't waste time with pointless things, to have more joy, uh, to prioritize, prioritize their needs, and always have time to listen to their own internal voice, the soul voice, not the inner critic. And last but not least, to communicate that to the all employees this is my target group right now, uh, that the sequence is always be, then do, then have, versus do, have, in order to be someone. You say that um, every single time we have a conversation about why coaching is so powerful and it can be a real game changer when it comes to employers productivity um it is really for me it's like eye opening to hear your best practices to hear your advice uh, to discuss with you some of the examples your own examples and and i just want to say that I wish uh, more and more HR leaders in this world uh, were as passionate, as uh, driven, as excited and motivated and inspired when it comes to employee well-being as much as you are, Eleni. So it's always inspiring. Um, so speaking of inspirations, I know that um, uh, 
Leroy Merlin initially considered uh, oxygen as part of its um, uh, people well-being initiative, um, and it was thanks to us, you know, uh, introducing to each other like uh, uh, seven to eight months ago. That was the very starting point of our um, kind of relationship. And because of this kind of connection uh, via LinkedIn, uh, we got considered by Leroy Merlin to be part of your uh, of your program in 2023 and 2024. So could you um, just tell us a little bit on what you had in mind back then, almost a year ago when you met me for the very first time, and what you were looking for as a solution um, when we we met for the very first time? Of course, uh, the design of this well-being strategy emerged during the creation of our corporate objectives uh, in October 22. Uh, where elected representatives of our stores and head offices see uh, set the well-being of our people as a key priority uh, in our three-year strategic plan. Uh, so we consciously decided before proceeding with the creation and implementation of any well-being action plan to investigate uh, what are the basic needs and requirements in all the well-being pillars of our employees and based on their answer uh, to proceed with the planning of some corresponding actions. So in January, in January uh, 2023, we ran an internal survey in order to diagnose these needs. And then I started looking for a provider uh, that combined the agility, the customer centricity and the test and learn mindset in order to start this initiative. And I'm very happy that I didn't give up <laughs> because I found it in another country uh with oxygen um and i'm very happy for that me too eleni me too so it's interesting that you've said that you your starting point was the um the, the key challenges and of course the the objectives of the organization um and it's interesting because when i get to to speak with hr leaders um in the uk and in greece um we uh, have conversations about some key challenges. And those challenges um, are very similar, uh, regardless the size of the organization. And especially I'm talking about challenges during the post pandemic era. So for example, there are many of our clients who whose employees are struggling with uh, cost of living crisis, lack of work-life balance, or well-being and mental health challenges. So to me, like it feels like it has been more important than ever before uh, for employees to, to really feel kind of seen and, and heard and uh, looked after uh, in many cases. And um, it's interesting because that will eventually, in many cases, it seems like it leads an organization to become an employer of choice within the respective industries. So yes, employees do need to feel looked after. And my question to you, I guess, is to what extent has Oxygen contributed to making your employees feel valued? Um, so to my surprise, we found out that up to this moment in this three month awareness phase, as you told me in the beginning, uh, two and a half months now, we have achieved the participation uh, rate, the engagement rate of our employees, because our goal at first was 20%, mm -hmm. um, and now it is 22. Mm -hmm. So this key indicator uh, was very important for us because we needed to see how people respond um, to this um, initiative. And another key indicator for us was the feedback. So uh, up to now, and I think that it will be um, 
and in the future, the feedback of our employees for this well-being program is extremely positive, both measurable and qualitative. And that's why uh, we are feel very optimistic that people uh, feel valued. Um, and I, when I talk to people every day in head office and stores, they always uh, mention me, mention to me that um, perhaps they have lost one course or one class or a webinar or workshop, and they always feel like. Uh, they feel guilty that, oh, Eleni, um, I, I will watch it um, at home with my family. I lost it, but I will join next time. So I think that people uh, feel that something is moving on. And uh, sure, the people team uh, and me personally um, take care of their emotional, physical uh, spiritual, occupational well-being, and uh, we measure it. We measure it uh, via feedback and engagement rate. Wow, um, I, I loved what you've said, and I feel like my key takeaway from this is that um, it's always good to uh, set some kind of ambitious goals as long as you uh, work with the right partner. So for example, I remember in our early days, Eleni, that we had the conversation about um, what are the utilization rates among the rest of the players in the market? And the best of the best of the employee well-being providers in the market, uh, they do not reach more than 17% utilization. So when uh, you and I met at the very first uh, time to discuss about our objectives, I recall that uh, we had this conversation about 17%, this is the baseline. So what, how, and, and just for the very first three months, which is typically the awareness phase, what our goal, um, uh, what a, a kind of a realistic goal should be. And I remember that uh, we both agreed that, you know what, let's set an um, ambitious goal. What is an ambitious goal within um, a very kind of starting phase of our program? Let's set 20% utilization and let's see how it goes. And uh, when we got to see the numbers, we both got surprised that we managed to actually exceed our uh, goals for this first couple of months, not even three months. And uh, now, from my understanding, is that um, we can get um, much and much higher when it comes to the engagement, because more and more employees within the organization uh, becoming, are becoming aware of this initiative. So uh, my, my key takeaway is that when you are uh, with the right partner, when you are with the, in the right team, when it comes to objectives and goals, a sky is the limit. And um, earlier we spoke a little bit about the challenges employees are facing in the post-pandemic environment. But what about um, challenges uh, many HR leaders face in this kind of uh, post-pandemic era. And when it comes to that, especially what kind of challenges do they uh, experience when it comes to employee well-being initiatives? And this is one of the questions I always ask my clients, like what is your number one challenge when it comes to introducing a program within your business? And eight out of 10 times is um, lack of time. So lack of time and lack of resources in general. Um, so there is a lack of time to dedicate to onboarding and there is a lack of enough people to support an initiative. And at Oxygen, this is exactly what we try to do differently. So could you share with me, Eleni, how was your experience with onboarding on the platform and providing insights a little bit just to share with us some insights on your experience with our customer support? Yes, of course. 
Uh, as I remember, our first onboarding was when you came here in Greece for three days and we made this onboarding fa a fast track fast process. Track. Yes, it was the most uh, uh, fast track process that I have ever experienced, but it was um, a momentum for me, a milestone, because I realized that it hasn't it isn't the problem it's not the time uh, the problem is the chemistry or the cooperation if someone uh, if, so if something is not going to um be fruitful so for me as a human and as well as a professional it was a prerequisite to have a partner throughout this period in order to consult me to show me empathy uh to show agility throughout this challenging period, because it was a challenging period. It was our first time uh, that we program. And uh, I wanted to feel security, uh, empathy and support. And I had made uh, a long time survey so that I could find a partner that could combine all these uh, qualities. And uh, I feel happy and grateful that I found Oxygen team and you, of course. I'm so happy to hear that, Aleni. And I agree with you in many cases, like um, ha having the right partner, it comes down to, yeah, okay, the, the platform needs to look, uh, you know, and, and be really um, kind of um, impactful. But it's also about the human uh, factor and how about having a partner who is there always to support and help and um, be flexible, as you've said earlier. Um, this, this kind of things are so important and uh, there are so important elements when it comes to the entire experience of launching coordinating and then analyzing the, the success of the program if you do not have a partner who can actually be that kind of person uh, who wants to work with you as a, as um as if you are the same team that's that's um that's impossible then it's not possible to build an initiative an intervention which can be really successful so when it comes to um, employee well-being, uh, I know that we both uh, agree that culture is really important to have the right culture within the organization. But also it's important to be able to promote this culture and the values uh, via certain initiatives within your organization. And when it comes to that, I'm very much interested in learning how helpful or not you found our internal communication toolkit, including our posters, the flyer, flyers, the newsletters, the social media posts, all the, the entire internal communication toolkit. And which of those tools proved to be the most effective in your experience? Uh, so the communication plan that uh, we co-designed was particularly and is particularly strong as it includes all the things that you mentioned. And therefore, I don't spend a lot of time dealing with all the administrative uh, pieces that my role didn't have time to support. And it was very significant for me that we have uh, co-designed an outline from uh, our first meeting uh, as partners and uh, where all the pending actions are mentioned there and we make all this monitoring uh, both of us and in this way uh, we had the chance to uh, monitor the action plan in detail and to adjust in anything that could have emerged uh, throughout the, the day. Yeah, and I feel, Eleni, like the beauty with this internal communication toolkit was that it was editable. So you were able to make changes and, and adjust certain parts the way that aligns best with your 
organization kind of branding guidelines. Um, and I feel that this is important because it's not just the templates, it's the ability that you can go on those templates and make any changes you like. Um, so my next question is about um, the employee well-being strategy. And of course, having visibility and clarity when it comes to the impact of your employee well-being programs is really important. So being able to say that we met our employees' needs or that we achieved our KPIs as we did with you, Eleni, or that we got our return of investment is crucial, right? It's so important. So being able to access, analyze, and measure data on what um, each activity has achieved, um, it was really important for us. So regarding reporting, we recently shared with you the first version of our three months awareness period. So you're able to see the data um, since last October up until now. And it's interesting because it actually gives you the landscape, gives you this kind of clarity that you might need. Um, so could you highlight like which aspects of this reporting support were most useful to you and why? Okay, great. Uh, this report was really helpful uh, as it consists of the statistics as far as the overall trends. So I get the main insights on what participants uh, appreciate, the practical tools, strategies, for example, for stress management, etc., financial well-being, uh, and which posture and attitude and which experts have a more positive impact on our collaborators. And also, what is the inclination in the preferences in order for classes and workshops to be repeated? Um, we have the participation rate for this awareness uh, period and many insights that we get as the overall people team, uh, the L&D department, uh, perhaps the payroll department, the training department um, that uh, we gain from this um, report and we um, take it into consideration in order to make our whole action plan as people team. Awesome. And it would be yeah. helpful to get a, um, this report from you mm -hmm. without having time to spend sometimes on this kind of reports as uh, HR leaders. And we have it something done, something ready in order to be presented uh, in people meetings, uh, in leadership team meetings or ambassadors meetings that we're going to discuss uh, later on. Amazing. Uh, that's incredible. And I loved what you've just said about having those reports actually informing uh, future decisions within your organization, not just around well-being, it might be around learning and development, or it might be around a different kind of area within your business um, that you would like to, you know, to, to get inspired by certain trends or certain patterns. And uh, this is our aim. This is our intention, really. Those reports can actually help you to uh, be more and be and feel more prepared when it comes to uh, your future planning. Um, and speaking of uh, of planning and in terms of this kind of coordination and logistics, um, we all know that well being and admin doesn't always go go hand in hand. In fact, uh, many HR partners within my network they actually. Um, you know, they feel like they do not get the support they need from their own uh, vendors because themselves, they need to spend 20 to 25 hours per month in planning and sending emails and notifications and reminders. And this is a really kind of time consuming uh, process. So, um, this is another thing that I feel that makes Oxygen a game changer is uh, in automating time consuming 
tasks, including sending those email reminders or notifications or soliciting feedback. So can you walk us through your experience of having Oxygen handle many of the administrative tasks, Lenny? Yes, of course. Our partnership uh, with Oxygen um, started with a prospect on a test and learn mindset. This was a great opportunity for us to co-create the interface uh, according to our needs, the platform interface. So we were seeing day by day, event by event, how the user's experience was. And uh, your team made all the changes and the um, um, ameliorations instantly. This was a game changer for us because we built trust. This is very important for me as a partner. And I was feeling secure, safe, and uh, that everything will go round. As we were fixing all the bugs, all the, all the things that came up uh, instantly. Mm. Um, because it was um, our first time. And it was in another language, with another uh, time zone. All the things that came up throughout the, this awareness phase. But the most important thing here for me, and I think for every HR leader, is to have with the provider, the partner, uh, a common goal. Mm. This common goal was to exchange open, sincere, continuous feedback so that our events will be more and more impactful. I love that. I love that, and I think um, it's it's really it's really really um, interesting what you've just said that being able to have this kind of collaboration um, with a vendor who wants to adjust the program as you go, right, and and make the program flexible to your employees' needs, because at the end of the day. It's not about us. It's about employees, our employees, and how do they feel about this program? And um, that's the beauty, as you've said, Eleni, that we had the opportunity to see in real time what it works well, what doesn't work that well, and make real time adjustments. Yes. And because of that, the feedback and and the the positive response from the employees was incredible. And uh, we have all those feedbacks. And every time I read uh, your employees' feedbacks, I feel I, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, it feels like we really, really paid attention and we really, really kind of listened to their needs. Um, so I'm so glad that you've said that because that was our intention from the get-go. Um, my next question, I guess, is about um, the um, the buying within the organization, right? So when we introduce an employee well-being initiative, um, it's it's really important to get everyone involved, and that means that we need to have the leaders within our organization to help us sell the program and promote it. Well, at the same time, we need to have ambassadors. We need to have the right well-being ambassadors in place to uh, help us because this will actually be the catalyst for success is to have those people engaged and engaging the rest of our um, teams. So when it comes to that, when it comes to engaging our senior leaders and when it comes to engaging our well-being ambassadors, uh, what, uh, what are your, your thoughts on this? What was your approach to this, Eleni? Panis, right now, are struggling uh, with uh, profitability, right? Productivity, profitability. Uh, however, this does not come alone. It derives from culture and employees' engagement. Well-being programs, my thoughts, my thought is that 
well-being programs are not a panacea for all organizational disease, mm -hmm. but they create healthy culture. And the healthy culture, research says, that increases profitability up to 30%, as Heskett says, and maybe it sounds scary and sometimes it is, but it's center, it's certainly not impossible to be one HR leader to lead such a project. An HR leader can do it very well, but she or he cannot go far. Hmm. It is understood and it is a basic condition for something so beneficial for the organization to be continued. Uh, that the leadership team is also involved and find the time and the mood to monitoring. Mm -hmm. So the HR leader needs to monitoring the main uh, to monitor the main KPIs, which are the basic indicators to be considered something impactful. But the HR leader can also animate, provide guidance and vision. And I truly believe that if we, uh, as HR leaders, we can make things happen uh, when we truly believe, as leaders, the offered benefit of the well-being programs to our people, but only in combination and in alignment with the company's strategy. I can't agree with you more, and it's um it's so powerful what you've just said, um and it just makes me thinking that it's really critical when it comes to introducing a new initiative within our organization. It's really critical to get that buy-in across within the entire organization in order to be successful. And this is what I really admire about you as a leader, Eleni, that you were so much um, inspiring within your within your business. You were that kind of inspiring leader and uh, that's why we had a team of well-being ambassadors um, at the ground actually supporting actively our initiative and this is why you were able to organize focus groups for us or to have their employees themselves spreading the word internally and it was thanks to you and your team that you created such a huge momentum about this program within the organization. Um, to be honest with you, uh, the real success behind Boxes and, and Leroy Merlin's kind of um yeah, the partnership between Oxygen and Leroy Merlin, the success, the secret weapon, the secret kind of sauce behind this successful partnership is um, yourself, that you were so much uh, engaged and you and your team really believed in this initiative and you've been so much supported. Uh, and, and supportive to, to the rest of your teams and supportive to your senior leaders internally. And you made sure that you were like a true uh, well-being champion internally. And without uh, that, nothing would be possible. We wouldn't be able to achieve and surpass our KPIs. We wouldn't be able to get a, our return of investment. We wouldn't be able to set goals and, and achieve them. And all this great feedback we received from your teams we have never been able to receive such an incredible feedback without um uh, without you working with your team and making sure that uh, you, you create that buzz you create this kind of momentum uh and and that was um an inspiration for me personally and just reminds me that it's not a one person a one month or a one woman show. It's more about a team effort. And without uh, being and working together as a team, uh, nothing is possible. So I'm so glad you've said that. And, and to be honest with you, this is for me so far, this is my greatest takeaway. 
Uh, my next question, I guess, is about uh, speaking of, you know, in I guess that leads us to my last question for today, which is all about Oxus and the platform, your experience so far. My understanding is that you had a very positive experience. So would you actually recommend the, the platform to someone who might you know, a company um, seeking a kind of solution to enhance their employees' well-being? Um, I would totally recommend Oxygen to other companies due to its flexibility, agility, innovation, uh, professionalism, and last but not least, due to your customer and people overall centric approach and if i have one minute to add something of course if i would like to share some benefits um from our corporation the uh, corporation is that oxygen um provides a great agility as it offers hybrid classes, workshops, and webinars. So people have can have the experience in vivo or virtually. And uh, our employees could participate in these classes from all over our stores in Greece and Cyprus. Secondly, uh, you gave us the benefit to have the program recorded for two months so that our employees could watch him uh, asynchronously and on their own pace. And uh, lastly, the key account manager uh, is always on your side to listen to your concerns, ideas, thoughts, fears by organizing uh, meetings with you uh, as an HR leader or with ambassadors so that you can raise the awareness uh, easily of the well-being program uh, you offer gifts freebies and etc and uh, I think the main um, benefit overall is that you uh, gain to meet people um, you meet kind people kind and customer centric people Thank you, Eleni. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate um, your kind words. And uh, it has been a pleasure for me and my entire team working with you and Leroy and Merlin the last couple of, of months. Um, and for me, uh, like, you know, it, it's one thing achieving and, uh, and kind of exceeding your goals, but it's another thing of building um a partnership with uh, another person, which is a partnership which is like um, a, a kind of um, a gift from God, and and it's like an experience which keeps giving. Um, so that's that's what I really uh, really enjoyed myself from this partnership that we were able to work together um, and to be so aligned and to work in a, such a coordinated way. Uh, but more than anything else is because for me, that was an, a journey where I've learned so much and I feel so much inspired by being, um, you know, surrounded by women like you, Eleni. So uh, I guess now that we are at the very end of this uh, conversation and we're just before Christmas, Lenny, do you have any uh, any kind of wish, uh, any specific kind of thoughts to share with our network? Um, I really, I'm not so keen on wishes, but I'm very keen on uh, intentions. And I really uh, hope, not hope, I really want people to set intentions for their own um, well-being. And I'm, I'm talking about the HR community. Uh, the HR community, I think, 
is uh, have many things to handle. Uh, I think it's a very um, it's a community that uh, is the most vital part of an organization is the soul and the ethics uh, of the organization and we need to be also empowered to take care of our well-being so that we can take care of other people because we cannot make it in another way. So I hope that the HR community set the intention to take um, themselves, take care of themselves first and um, in an authentic way and uh, have more joy. The HR community, I think, have has lost uh, joy. Mm. Hope we find it again. Me too, Eleni, I do. Uh, that's great what you've just said. And I uh, feel like um, it's so important for HR leaders to prioritize their own sanity first before anyone else. So um, I'm so I'm so glad you you shared your thoughts with me because um I feel like we both come from the same kind of place when it comes to that prioritizing our own mental health before uh, we um, try to support anyone else. Um, so that's important. Um, from uh, from this conversation we just had today, I feel so much uplifted. I feel so much re re-energized mentally, um, recharged emotionally, Eleni. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, you know this year comes to an end um, with us having worked on a, such a successful project and being together on this journey. And I just want to say that I'm really, really grateful and I really, really appreciate you. Me too, Alex, you know that. And thanks for this chance because this is my first podcast. Mm -hmm. This is uh, another one manifestation for me. And I really, really thank you. We had such a great time and we should definitely do a part two, maybe uh, in, in three months time again to review the, the progress, to review the journey. What do you say about that, Eleni? Yes, of course, Alex. Whatever you say, I'm I try. For it. We're up for it. We're both up for it. So um, I just want to wish to our lovely community, our HR network, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, uh, spend some lovely uh, time of true self-care uh, with your family and um, create this quality time. That's that's all we need. Uh, this is my wish for you guys. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone. <laughs>